Well, it turns out the news that we had saying that the Oilers and Jake Vertanen were probably not going to link up. That was a freaking lie. Because it turns out the Oilers actually do sign Jake Vertanen to a PTO. And it's not even just Jake himself. It's also Jason Demers, whom they put in the front of the tweet, as well as whose picture they put on the article right here, because they knew the response that would be given out to news like this. You can see they're kind of getting ratioed on their own tweet in terms of the quote retweets and everything. But the Oilers end up signing Jake Furtan into a PTO. Jason Demers, okay, that's news. It's whatever. It's a backseat to what is actually happening up front here for their forwards. The Oilers are taking a chance on a guy in Vertanen that, as we highlighted in a video a few days ago, is absolutely not worth it in terms of the optics, in terms of the on-ice talent, and in terms of the entire package. We talked a few days ago about how Jake Vertanen, if you disregard the SA allegations wherein he was proven, or not proven, but found not guilty, that is completely removed from my assessment of Jake Furtanen not being a player who is worth it in the first place. We had talked about this in a video before. Even if you take out the not guilty verdict, Jake Furtanen is a guy that was given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity in Vancouver and who just did not show up at all. He had one good year, 18 goals, 36 points in 69 games played, disappeared in the bubble playoffs that season. The next year, he sucked. Five goals in 38 games played and zero assists. The guy has a hockey IQ of a brick, and he has the tools. Yes, he's big, he's strideful, he's got a good shot, he has some good hands, but he cannot use them. He can't use them. And the Vancouver Canucks fan base gave this guy chance after chance after chance, so many years of development and very small progression from Jake Furtanen that the SA allegations were the icing on the cake which allowed the Vancouver Canucks to go out there and terminate his contract. As I said, even disregarding the allegations and everything that happened in the court, he still was not a good enough player to keep along. And... The profile that he had in Russia, 16 points in 36 games played for Sparta Moscow, like, that's not even great either. Go over to Sparta Moscow and take a look at some of the other guys that outscored Jake Furtanen on the same team. Take a look at this. This is Yori Laterra. You remember Yori Laterra for the St. Louis Blues? Yeah, he wasn't really all that great. Sergei Shirakov was over here as a better point producer than Jake Furtanen, and he was another Vancouver Canucks bust. Look at Emil Pedersen. That's Elias Pedersen's older brother that's not good enough to make the NHL. These guys all outproduced Jake Vertanen, and Jake Vertanen's the guy who's being given the opportunity to come back in the NHL. Jake Vertanen is just not talented enough of a player to justify going through this amount of turmoil in the optics of the media to do so. This is Jeff Vayette's tweet that I pretty much agree with over here. I don't understand the Vertanen PTO at all. The optics on it are terrible. And even if you think the results of his court case 100% absolve him, he's also just plain not any good. It's an absurd hill for the Oilers to die on for any reason other than spite. It took a shooting percentage of 1.5, his career average, to peak at 36 points at an early prime age. He's big and fast, but he doesn't use his size, and he has zero awareness. He has conditioning issues and looked just okay in a depth-depleted KHL at 25. Even if he was innocent, he would still be a pass. Here's Dom Lishishan from The Athletic saying that Jake Furtanen is the perfect player if you want your team to simultaneously be worse and less likable. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, look, if Jake Furtanen goes out there and he comes over to the Oilers, let's say he impresses enough to earn a one-year deal. It's possible under Ken Holland, believe me. If Vertanen goes out there and he scores, let's say, six goals on an entire NHL season, because, let's face it, man, five goals in 38 games with a bad Vancouver Canucks team in 2021 versus a full season of Oilers hockey in 2022-2023 with a much better core in front of him... If the guy is only able to get six goals or whatever, was that six goals really worth it to go out there through this entire process of bringing him onto the team and having everybody backlash on the Oilers, saying that they're a bad team for getting this kind of guy? I don't know, man. There are other guys that can go out there and score six goals on your team that I think would have a much better impact for the optics of your organization. But that's just me. 
We had talked about this and more in the Jesse Pulley RV video a few days ago, so go ahead and check out that one for my thoughts, I guess, which I kind of just laid out here. Vertanen is not a good player. The allegations and everything don't make things any better for him coming out and joining the Edmonton Oilers. The fact is, he's a big dude with some pretty good draft pedigree, sixth overall in 2014, and that's pretty much the only reason he's being brought on here. There are more talented players in the free agent pool. There were a ton more talented players on his KHL team last year, all of whom aren't even good enough to crack the NHL anymore anyway. So, yeah, it doesn't really make too much sense if you ask me, but... This is the news. Jake Vertanen and Jason Demers are both on PTOs. Sorry, Jason Demers, we couldn't talk about you in this video, but that's just kind of the talk of the town now, isn't it? Talk in the comments all your thoughts about Jake Vertanen joining Edmonton, and how good do you think he's actually going to be? Because I personally am very pessimistic on Vertanen and his hockey-playing future in regards to success at the NHL level, but that's just me. Talk in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishra Shrolls 99, and... Bye.